All right, all right, all right now. Welcome to Whiskey Straight Up. I've got a lot lined up for this episode, including a lot of new whiskey releases, NFL and grilling whiskey news. No, that's not a typo. Five bottles that I'll always pick up when I find them and so much more. Let's get right into it. I'm Derek Sanford and this is Whiskey Straight Up. Thank you for joining me. Let's get right into this week's releases. So first up, we have this year's 2023 Four Roses Limited Edition Small Batch. Apparently has the oldest bourbon ever included in one of their blends. So earlier this week, Four Roses Bourbon announced its 135th anniversary limited edition small batch will be released on September 15th. So this release will be the 16th in the series um it's going to be bottled at 108 proof and it features four bourbon recipes it's a 12 year old and a 16 year old oesv um those tend to have like fruit and caramel notes uh it's got a 14 year old oesk uh so those tend to have like baking spices and it's got a 25 year old obsv Um, which OBSV is typically a little spicier. They say fruit um, and rye flavors, basically meaning spicy fruit. Um, There's just over 15,000 bottles of this new limited edition small batch being put out. The price is right around $200. I mean, first of all, all jokes aside, there goes another $200 out of my wallet. I'm definitely not going to miss out on this one. Um, I, am I concerned that there's a 25 year old OBSV going into it? <sighs> Maybe a little, but, um, I don't know. You could say that there's going to be a lot of spice and bitter Oak maybe in that, but, but even if it is the flavor should be matched with a lot of the sweetness from like the OESV and the OESK brows going into it. So I'm going to be honest. I truly can't wait to taste this one. I'm a huge Four Roses fan. I've never had a 25-year anything from them. Um, the OESK and OESV are two of my favorite recipes. And I know Brent likes them too, which is probably why he's highlighting them. The idea of taking the sweetness and offsetting it with some of that rye spice and like with the older 25-year aged whiskey, you're going to get some of that bitter oak. So taking those two and uh, those two like flavor profiles and meshing them together, I'm assuming they probably didn't use a lot of the 25 year uh, aged just because it's it's probably lost a lot and it's 25 year aged like they they're not going to just start dumping that into bottles, um, so it's probably not it's probably just the right balance at least I hope so so um, keep an eye out for them uh, you know Four Roses has a thing going on on their website right now where you can get into a lottery and hopefully be able to buy one from the distillery. Uh, you know, hop on there, try to win it, try to win the right to buy one. And if you do, um, man, go pick it up because even if, uh, you're not a, whor- a huge four roses fan, the ability to have that bottle is pretty rare. So, um, yeah, I'm excited and I can't wait to get my sample. Can you believe it's already this time of year? We have all the good whiskey releases in the fall. Another one announced this week was Old Forester's 2023 birthday bourbon. The release is a 12-year-old bourbon, and it's proofed at 96. Um, I tend to find that these releases from Old Forester uh, always drink higher than their proof point. I mean, honestly, their blue-labeled regular barrel releases uh, tend to drink kind of hot. So um, the birthday bourbon being under 100 proof, it never worries me because I think it will have that punch. Um, and tons of flavor. Uh, the barrels for this one were, um, as usual, they're from one day's production at the distillery. Coincidentally, this year's barrels are the same lot as last year's release, um, just one year older. Uh, the bottle itself will cost $150. Um, it's available online uh, via the lottery that they're running right now on their website, similar to what Four Roses is doing. They did this last year. Um, I think it was a hit just because it gave people that don't live in Kentucky the ability to get the bottles. Uh, Previously, it was distillery only. The only downside is if you win, I'm not going to call it a downside. The upside, if you win, is that you get to go to Kentucky and go pick it up from the distillery. 
Um, obviously, you have to pay for them. It's not, you know, it's not a contest to win it for free. But I don't care, man. Birthday Bourbon, it's an annual release that, um, to be quite honest, I used to go to great lengths to get. I kind of overspent a few times, and uh, I called in fl- favors in the past. Um, you know, I really fell for the hype back then. After trying a bunch of those releases over the years, I stopped searching so hard for them. It's it's not that the whiskey is bad. It's it's actually quite good. It's just not worth fighting tooth and nail for or paying hundreds of dollars on secondary for it. Um, I'm going to enter the lottery this year just like everyone else. If I win, I think the bottle will go towards um, prizes for my upcoming local casino night. Um, I think the money that it will raise is much worth much more than, than me drinking it. Um, even though I really like these releases, I just think it's a uh, high... Uh, high visibility, super allocated bottle that if I can get my hands on it, I'd rather do some good with it than not. Next up, Victor's announced their 2023 Toasted Barrel Rise coming in September of this year. Uh, it will be uh, proof that 108.9 and the suggested retail is $120. Um, master of maturation, Andrea Wilson, who self plug we had on the show, not that long ago. Um, at least it doesn't feel like that long ago. I think it might've been last year. Um, she had said our master distiller, Dan McKee and I first select fully matured barrels of our us one rye. We then transfer those rye barrels for finishing into a second barrel made of special wood, naturally air dried and seasoned outdoors for 24 months and then toasted to our specifications, but not charred. The toasted barrel finished rye is designed to, to showcase the beautiful extractives from a toasted only finished barrel that impart remarkable character and contribute to an exceptional experience. Listen, I'm going to buy these every time they release them. The toasted sour mash from last year, it was phenomenal. The toasted rye and bourbons that I've had in the past, very, very good. I, I think these are an instant purchase for me. And if I were you, don't sleep on them if you find them. Honestly, a couple times I walked past them not realizing it said toasted on the label, um, thinking it was the barrel strength rye. Uh, and at the time I had a few of them on my shelf. Don't make that mistake because the toasted, I, I do think are better than the the uh, barrel strength. And if you can find them, grab them. So we have another release from Jack Daniels. Go figure. Uh, Chris Fletcher takes over and we have release and release and release. Um, something we didn't see before. Uh, this one's part of their Heritage series, which they have done in the past. Um, they've just released their twice barreled special release Heritage Barrel Rye. That's a mouthful, but these things tend to be. Um, the mash bill for this one is the same as Jack Daniel's regular rye. It's 70% rye, 18% corn, and 12% malted barley. The whiskey will be charcoal filtered, just like Jack always does. Um, it's aged for five years in a new charred oak barrel. Um, and it's transferred to a heavily toasted heritage barrel for two more years. Um, wow. I didn't think about this when I was making my notes, but that's a two years is a long finish, right? Um, I wonder what that does to the whiskey. Uh, the retail price for these will be $75, but I mean, if you don't live in the area of the distillery, good luck finding them. Um, they're all over secondary right now, actually, uh, for much more than $75. Um, I haven't actually tasted it yet. I do have a sample coming from a friend, so I can't recommend spending a ton of money on them yet. Um, but if you can find them, if you can find your way over to the distillery and they have them that day, $75, I think would be a good, a good value for, uh, essentially a seven-year whiskey that's been twice barreled. Um, I'm definitely curious about the flavors that will come from a two-year finish uh, with a heavy toasted barrel. Um, but when I get my sample, I'll let you guys know, as I always do. The last release I'm going to cover this week is the newest little book by Jim Beam. It's being called In Retrospect, and there's a reason for that. It's a blend of six components of previous versions of the series, plus one new one. Um, The whiskeys that were blended into this bottle were an 18-year-old Kentucky bourbon, a 17-year-old Kentucky bourbon, a 10-year-old Kentucky rye, a 9-year-old Kentucky bourbon, a 5-year-old malt whiskey finished in applewood smoked barrels, 4-year-old Kentucky bourbon, and a 4-year-old Kentucky rye. Holy crap, that's a lot of different whiskeys. 
it kind of sounds like a mess, but we'll see how it tastes. The retail on this is $150, so it's a bit of an exper expensive experiment. And I'd probably recommend you taste it at a bar before buying it. If you're a huge fan of Little Book and a huge fan of Beam, um, I mean, go pick it up. You know, do what you do what you're normally gonna do. But uh, I haven't tasted this one, and to be quite honest, I'm not a huge fan of these flavor profiles at a Little Book and some of the Beam experimentals. Uh, so I'm probably not gonna pick it up. But I I am interested now that I read all this. Uh, so I think um, I think I'm gonna try and find this bottle at a bar somewhere so I can taste it. But let's move on to whiskey news. So with all these release announcements, we didn't have too much general news coming out of the distilleries this week. Um, I did notice a trend, though. We have two whiskeys, Sagamore Spirits and Woodson, that signed deals to be the official whiskey of sports teams. So Sagamore is out of Baltimore. They are the Ravens' official whiskey. Woodson, of course, it's the new Raiders' official whiskey. Um, we also... Uh, saw, uh, saw Hudson Whiskey release the official whiskey of the New York Mets. Um, I mean, congrats to all the distilleries on these deals. The NFL is a monster, and most sports have huge fan bases. the The Super Bowl is usually the largest viewed event of the year on national TV. Um, good brand visibility is good for whiskey in general, so I'm all for this, except for the Mets. And Hudson Whiskey. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Next up, we have Buffalo Trace, Southern Comfort, and Fireball debuting whiskey-inspired seasonings. They're going to be released by B&G Foods brand Weber. Um, for those of you that don't know who they are, they're a pretty popular grill maker. The kind you cook on, not golden diamond teeth. Um, <laughs> the three flavors will only be available at Sam's Club, and they'll be released in September. Do you think these end up on secondary? <laughs> I really wouldn't be surprised. Um, there's no alcohol in these seasonings, which is not surprising. Here are some of the details for each one. Fireball whiskey flavored embraces the bold, sweet cinnamon heat of Fireball. They recommend using it in recipes for wings, ribs, pasta salads, and desserts. Um, Buffalo Trace whiskey flavored is inspired by the sweet, fruity, and rich notes of Buffalo Trace. So... They say it brings a smooth caramel-driven flavor to meats, sides, and desserts. Uh, Southern Comfort Whiskey, I think, is the one they didn't know what to do with because uh, it has notes of stone fruit, warm spices, and garlic, and they say to use it on lighter fare like poultry and potatoes. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm buying this. I don't care if it's a set. I don't care if it's individually. As long as, long as the cost isn't crazy, um, I'm, I'm super interested. My next segment's a new one. It's titled, The More You Know, because I'm an early 80s baby and I have nostalgia. If you're a full-on millennial or younger, look it up. So during World War II, many Kentucky distilleries were used to produce penicillin. Why? Like bourbon, penicillin is a product of fermentation. The bourbon business actually saved lives. During World War I, so many soldiers died from disease and infection um, actually more died from those than actual combat. Um, penicillin was discovered in 1928. Uh, it just hadn't been mass produced before World War II. So this is where bourbon comes in and saves the day. Since the U.S. was knee deep in war, they were looking at every business basically to see how it could help with the war effort. Once they noticed that distilleries could easily be converted to huge penicillin manufacturers, it was on. The science behind it's a bit boring, but they basically were able to use the tanks in the distilleries to grow the antibiotic. Um, I'm not a scientist, so don't rip my head off if I missed a few steps. Um, but I think it's a pretty cool story. I mean, the good of the country came before profit. The distilleries did their part to help us end World War II and saved a lot of lives in the process. Now... Let's talk about some stuff going on here at Whiskey Straight Up. Earlier this week, I dropped my review of Stag Batch 18. Uh, check it out. I know the bottle was released a few months back, but I couldn't help myself. I found it in my hands, and I needed to review it. Um, is it on the top list of Stag Junior releases for me? I mean, I can't give it all away, but it, it's a damn good release. Hit up the channel to see why I liked it and to see where it ranks amongst the previous releases. 
I do want to ask a favor. We want to know what kind of show you all want. If there's something you love or hate about these Friday shows, please reach out in the comments. This is your show, and we can't make it better without your feedback. All right, so thanks in advance for your help. Now, let's get into today's whiskey chat. Five bottles that I will always buy. The idea here is bottles I'm about to name are all instant buys for me no matter where or when I see them. Uh, they're consistently good products that rarely, if not ever, let me down. Um, I'm going to start right away, jump right into it, and uh, hopefully you agree with me on some of these or I open your eyes a bit. So the first one on here, Russell's Reserve Single Barrel Picks. The warehouses and the tiers within each um, have a huge effect on the whiskey. Some of the most complex whiskeys I've had uh, have come from Russell's uh, picks. Uh, one of the ones that come to mind actually is Dad's Drinking Bourbon did a pick. I think it was last year. Um, it was a turkey pick, basically. That was it was Kentucky Fried Turkey or something like that. It was delicious. It had just the right amount of spice to go along with the uh, the sweet notes and um, by far one of the top ones that I've had. Uh, you know, honestly, I love how you can get something super sweet or spicy or like a great mix of everything all under one brand's expression. Um, and you're not going to find a bad one very often. Like the least tasty bottles that you get from Russell's are better than a lot of some, a lot of the more expensive stuff that you're going to find out there. So if you do find a Russell's reserve single barrel pick, um, you know, a private pick, not a pick that, not a, not a single barrel regular uh, offering that you find on the shelf. Um, I would say pick it up because they're never really going to be overpriced, even though the price has been creeping up over the last year. Um, and they're always going to be worth it. The next on my list, Four Roses single barrel picks. Well, there he goes again. It's Four Roses. Uh, do we expect for it not to be on here? Listen, I love Four Roses, but genuinely these are some of the best things that you can find out there. Uh, consistent, great product. Um, the wide array of options with all the recipes out there is awesome. There's 10 different full on recipes. You have two different mash bills and the yeast involved in each one. There's five of each. So total of 10 different ways that you can go with it. Um, even my least favorite of those recipes are still good whiskeys. As far as I'm concerned, I've had a few bad picks, but I mean, Guys, I've had a lot of Four Roses single barrel picks, and if just a few were bad, um, and and by bad they probably were still better than a lot of other stuff out there. I don't think that I think those odds are in your favor. So, if you were out and you happen to find a Four Roses single barrel pick, not the hundred proof regular offering that you find on the shelf, but a single barrel private reserve pick, pick it up and let me know what you think of it because I think you're gonna love it. All right. The next one on my list is very personal. Um, it's one that you're not going to find very often, but when you do, it's like finding gold. Um, Hot Shatter's 16-Year Rye. So it's made my list mainly because they're gone, but I still find an occasional bottle. Uh, and it it's literally the name of this list. If I find it, I'm going to buy it. If you know, you know. Um this bottle is so damn tasty. Uh, seriously, like, I don't even care that at minimum you're going to pay 200 for it. If you can afford that for a bottle, uh, specifically a special bottle, buy it. I mean, I always have a bottle on my shelf. I try to have backups. Right now, I'm actually without a backup. Uh, I just cracked open my last one a couple weeks ago, and unfortunately, we made a dent in it that night. So, um, yeah, if anyone's got a lead on one that's not illegal uh, and it's found in a regular store, let me know. Um, the flavor notes in these are, are it, it's just a very funky aged rye. Um, I feel like rye, uh, specifically Canadian rye and blends that have Canadian rye in them, uh, when you age them, something very funky happens to them. And it's a flavor that maybe I can't quite put my, my, my finger on. Um, but when you taste it, like I said before, if you know, you know. Uh, this stuff's unique, different, and it was a limited release, and it's been gone for like five or six years now. And if you're lucky enough to find it, it's Hotstatter's 16-Year Rye. Um, buy it, and then tag me when you drink it, and uh, let me know how much you love it, because I really don't think you're going to hate it. 
Um, next up, Elijah Craig, 94 proof barrel picks. A lot of you like the big brother, the barrel proof, and you probably thought that's where I was going to go with this, but I think Elijah Craig, um, kind of similar to old Forrester mentioned earlier. Uh, it tends to be, it tends to drink higher than its proof point. And when you have the barrel proof releases out there, I just think they're too spicy and it takes away from the flavor of the whiskey. Um, I really enjoy how good the private picks are of the lower 94 proof option. Um, the, it, it's just Elijah Craig just proofs down very well. It still holds a lot of flavor. The private barrels that they use are usually better whiskey than like the regular shelf stock version that you're going to find out there. So you get a little bit more flavor, some nuances that aren't consistent with what you find on the shelf normally. Um, you know, for me, a lot of them tend to be cherry bombs. But they also incorporate caramel, vanilla, baking spices into the notes I get from them. So it's kind of a prototypical bourbon. Um, I know I've used that terminology a lot in this show previously, but uh, I mean, Elijah Craig 94 proof, regular bourbon, uh, specifically the barrel picks. That's that's prototypical bourbon for me, and I love them. So when I see them out there, uh, I don't care who picked them. I'm going to pick them up because they're like 30 to $35 typically. Sometimes you'll see it cheaper in the twenties. Um, and I, totally worth it, man. Totally worth it. So, uh, if you see it, pick them up. The last one I'm going to get some stuff for, uh, Eagle rare. I don't care if it's a regular bottle. I don't care if it's a barrel pick. I'm always going to grab it. It's one of the first bottles prior to the big boom of bourbon that I really fell in love with. Um, for me, I, I say all this, but I got to preface it with the price has got to be at retail or close to it. I can't be ridiculous with it. I'm not going to pay $60, $70 for a bottle. I don't care whose barrel pick it is. I don't care how long it's been since I saw saw one out in the wild. I'm not going to pay that much. But I mean, for $30 or 30 ish, you're not going to find a great bourbon that's aged 10 years that's that tasty uh, very often. Um, I truly love the, the flavor profile of Mash Bill 1, of Buffalo Trace Mash Bill 1 that goes into the Eagle Rare. But if you can find a barrel pick of the Mash Bill 2, which is the little bit higher rye content, it might be even better. Uh, we did a barrel pick not that long ago with a local establishment, Corona Cigar, um, down here in Sarasota, that uh, it's one of my favorite. I mean, I know it's my personal pick that we did in our group, but it's one of my favorite barrel picks I've ever had of them, and it's a Mash Bill 2. The elevated spice that came with all that sweetness um it just made it a whole mouth experience and it was just phenomenal um so yeah go ahead call me a tater i don't care it's good whiskey all right folks that is my list of five whiskeys that i will always pick up no matter what when i see it in a store at or close to retail um so yeah that is all for this week's episode of whiskey straight up I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did making it. I will leave you with this little nugget of wisdom. Remember, open those special bottles and share them with good company. And if you're going to drink, please do so responsibly. Cheers.